Hi, this is Silas Ram of AsianCultureVulture.com. We're here at the 71st Cannes Film Festival, and I'm with the celebrated critic of The Guardian for 40 years, chief film critic of The Guardian for 40 years, Derek Malcolm. Derek, welcome. How are you doing? Well, I'm a bit tired already, and oh, really? it's only the second day. I know, terrible. it's incredible, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. So what, what makes you come to Cannes and the film festival? Well, it's still the best festival in the world for films. Really? I think so. Right. Well, Venice is catching up now. Okay. And how has Venice managed to do that in the last... This is such a big festival, 40,000 people, 4,000 journalists, you know, the whole uh, world, film media is here. And Venice used to be, I think, at one, at one point quite, quite prominent, but yes. it then faded and now it seems to be enjoying a resurgence. But why is that? Well, I think it's just the, the directors determined to get Hollywood films and all the... Um, prize-winning films before and before Toronto. Oh, I see. They go right, on to Toronto right, right. afterwards. Um, but he's been very successful in mixing up art movies and the more commercial ones. Right. And you find that the Oscars at Venice yeah. every year. Right, right. And not so many at Cannes. No, but Cannes, right. for sheer quality, right. is still the best festival. Oh, OK, OK. And what kind of changes have you seen? You've been coming for, to Cannes for how long now? 40 years. 40 years. Yeah, yeah. And what, what, what do you think are the biggest changes, the things that have affected you personally as a professional? Well, it's in much, much more difficult now right. than it used to be. Yeah. We used to walk along the croisette right. and you'd meet all the distinguished directors and you'd have a coffee with them right. and there'd be no... PA people, yeah, yeah, PR people. Exactly. You could just go up and start yes. talking to them and do an interview. You really. could, uh, yes. But yeah, that's impossible these days. It's I mean, almost it's impossible. impossible. Yeah. So yeah. it was more friendly, less right. commercial, and less films too. Okay. And, um, well, it was a different kind of festival. Yeah, right. But now, money is everything. Yeah, money, you know? yeah right. Yeah, money and there's a huge that. market yeah. and yeah, everything. Yeah. So and you get lost sometimes, absolutely. completely lost. Yeah. So we're here in the India Pavilion. You have an affinity for Indian cinema. Can you tell us yes, a little I've bit about that and why? I've been going to India for, oh, again, 40 years, wow. every year. Wow. You still go so, now? Yes, I do. Wow, wow. Mm. Well, what is it about India that keeps you going Well, back? I used to know Shodhjit Ray quite oh, okay, well. And yeah. I used to go and have dinner with him. Wow. In, uh, Calcutta, right. and I used to know Mrinal Sen and oh, Sham yeah. Benegal yeah. and those sort right. of people right. when there was the great outpouring of Indian yeah. cinema yeah. in the 70s. Yeah. Yeah. And then it faded, yeah. unfortunately. It yeah. But uh, there's still some good filmmakers in India. Sure. The trouble is they can't get very much of a relief. No, know. I know. Are there yeah. any particular filmmakers of the modern generation that you particularly uh, enjoy watching their films? Anybody you could pick out? Um... Well, I'm not sure. There, right. are, there are two or three very good young directors. Okay. Um, but I don't know whether they'll fade. I see. You know, if you don't get a distribution, you give up sometimes. So, like, are you familiar with the work of Anurag Kashyap, who's been here with oh, several yes. films? Yes, do you indeed. Like, you yes, know, I do. Did yes. you like the last one that came here, Raman Raga? We were here. I did, yes. 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 Mm. Um, he's a fantastically... Um, a debt filmmaker. I think he makes very sophisticated. I don't. I think he doesn't make bad films. You know, no, he makes he doesn't. films that you might feel aesthetically may could have been a bit different. But mm. he doesn't do bad films for me. No. And are there other other Indian directors like that who you come across that? Well, there are, but uh, the you know the older generation seems to be fading a bit. Yeah. That's the problem. Yeah. yeah. The younger ones. Well, they're just starting yeah, out sure. so difficult for yeah, them, though. Absolutely. It really is. But I go to be a mentor at the film yeah. bazaar every oh, year. Oh, right. That, the one in Goa? Yes. Yeah. Right, right. OK. And um, is that... Um, when uh, you're looking at South Asian cinema and the fact that it, you know, it had a strong period in the 70s, and we, what do you make of the interest in Bollywood and like big Indian studio films? Well, Bollywood is improving, right? But it's still essentially cliche. Oh, I see. Yeah. <laughs> I went to a Bollywood film not so long ago, and I sat next to uh, an Indian. And he said, uh, it was a three-hour film. Right, right. And he said to me, how long are you lasting? And I said, oh, about an hour. He right. said, well, I'm lasting 40 minutes. Oh I directed God. it. 
<laughs> so they know. Right. I used to know Shashi Kapoor very okay, well. Right, yeah. right, right. And how did you find him? You know, as a, he was a charming yeah. man, a very nice man. Right. He didn't treat himself seriously oh, at all. Okay. But he was quite a good actor. Yeah, yeah, I think you so. Know, they could. recently showed uh, uh, the, uh, the UK Asian Film Festival, they showed that um, uh, Siddhartha, which is an old 1970s Oh, yes, indeed, film. yes. And he was tremendous in that. Yes. And, uh, you saw that he could do both Bollywood and yes, he could. You know, Western cinema, which not very many people no. You know, Ashbrook had a career He was right. very good looking, of course. Yeah, yeah. And that helped. Yeah. But he didn't know what he was in half the time with the Bollywood. <laughs> He was doing so many Bollywood so many films. films. Yeah, yeah. He'd go from one set to another. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so, what, what, why do you think there aren't? There, there's a, a couple of Indian films in the official selections this year. Yeah. Um, Manto Nandita Das, and there's a movie called Sir by a, a yeah. Ray Nagera. Yeah. Well, why do you think that Cannes has not had more Indian? Well. Films. India had a disastrous record at festivals yeah. for many, many years. years yeah. They brought films which were very bad prints right. and terrible subtitles. Oh, right. And the people used to say, oh, we don't want to bother yeah. with India. Right, right. And that that's a terrible thing because it, even when things have improved a lot, people are still wary of Indian films oh, a bit. Indeed. That's one of the reasons, I think. Yeah. The other reason, I don't think the French know much about the Indian cinema really. Right. They came to Ray very late yeah, and right. to Sen very late oh, too. Yeah. But they're very, I mean I've seen a Sen movie here some time back and they still, there's obviously an interest and a, a respect for that type of filmmaking. Oh yes, and absolutely. That type of filmmaking isn't very common now in India because it's simply, no. you know, it's very artistic. The trouble with India is there's no art circuit. Yes, yes. So if you make a, an art film, or, or, you know, where do you put it? Absolutely, absolutely. You know, you can't put it in one of these huge cinemas. No. You know, it just it doesn't, doesn't work. work. Does it? yes, yes. It's a shame, really. And that sometimes makes these young directors say, oh, I give up. Yeah, I'll, I'll do uh, I'll advertising yeah, exactly, or television yeah. or something. Yeah, something make that some makes money. money. Yeah, exactly. Correct. That's the trouble. So, we're not long into the festival. What, what films have you seen and what has impressed you? Well, I haven't seen very many yet, right. but Donbass is the okay. best one. Okay. The U Ukrainian one. Yeah. It's right. very depressing. <laughs> Sorry, guys. I... Very depressing. Right, right, very depressing. But it's very good. Very well made. Okay. Very well made. And, yes. and what are you looking forward to? Is oh, I'm looking up forward to Pavel Pavlovsky's uh, film. Yes. It's the shortest film in the competition, <laughs> which is a very good thing. So I'm pleased about that. He always makes good films. And. Uh, and are you looking forward to Spike Lee coming, you know, it's a long time? Yes, I am, he, yes. Um, yes, I hope he renews himself. Yeah. Certainly an interesting subject, isn't Absolutely, it? Absolutely, yeah, very topical. And so, I mean, can you never know what to expect from yeah. Can? Yeah. Some years you think, this is a wonderful festival, Absolutely. and it turns out to be not very good at all. Okay. And at other times, you think this is awful festival, and yet it comes up with good ones, good so stuff. you never know. What, what would you say has been your like your best Cannes experience oh. in all this time? God knows. Oh Something dear. that really sticks out in your mind, you know, a film or maybe an interview that you did. Well, I met Bunwell here. Oh, wow. And Orson Welles. <laughs> and people like that. Yes, absolutely. Clint God. Eastwood and... Yeah. Howard Hawks. And so, were they really legends? You know, did you get that feeling when you were with them? In their no, program? you didn't. No, they were quite normal, oh, really. I, I mean, when you just had a coffee with them, you know, right, they were right, fine. Right, right. But, but they were always film, nice to critics. Yeah. All these people are nice to critics because they got a film coming up and yeah. they want a good review. Right, right. And you're not going to ask them who they slept with on Tuesday. <laughs> <laughs> and do you? What would? What's your worst Cannes experience? You know, with a maybe with a director, some you said something or you reviewed something and they they didn't like it and or, Well know. I remember walking along the Croisette. Yes. Um, and I saw I was passing the Carlton right. and I saw two bottoms right. coming out of a window at the top. Oh I see, right, okay. Bear. One of the bottoms right. was Gerard Departures. Right. 
The other one was Nick Nolte's. Oh my God. And I was just, right. they'd had a heavy night together. <laughs> and uh, I was due to interview Nick Nolte. All right. <laughs> but yeah. but he, he put it off. <laughs> he was too drunk. Near there. Okay. He did, thank God. But uh, some funny things do happen in Cannes, I must say. And some horrible things too. And so what, what would you tell British filmmakers who want to show their films at Cannes? You know, they, still... Well, I always say to them, <coughs> oh dear, don't just go for the competition. Yeah. Try the director's fortnight yeah, right. and uh, certain regard and the critics' week. But they're obsessed with competition. And, oh, I was refused the competition, therefore I won't go, which yeah, is very that's silly. That's silly. That's silly. And what would you say to like young British Asian filmmakers who want to make films about uh, yes. you know, British Asian life? And they, is there is Cannes a, a market for them? Can they yes, pitch I think the so. Cannes, the Cannes Film Fest? I think Cannes is trying to do that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, very hard, but it's very difficult for them it to, is. to is. where do they get the money from? Yeah, that, that's obviously a problem. It's but a real, and Brexit doesn't help. No, exactly, because there's European money that sometimes yeah. could help. Um, but, but you know, you do see a lot of television now about yeah. the immigra immigration yeah, system sure, and sure. the young Asians. Yeah, yeah. And there are some talented ones in, in England yeah, yeah. who are tr trying very hard to make films. Yeah, absolutely. One day they'll get to Cannes. One day they'll, that'll be but a fantastic But it's very moment. disappointing that there's hardly a British film. I know, yeah. That, that's, I mean, apart from Terry Gillam at the closing. Yes. There's very, there doesn't seem to be anything to get really No, excited not about. really, and no. That, that's very unfortunate, I it think. It is unfortunate, yeah. because nowadays there's very many good young yeah, female directors. Do you, you know? think the Cannes Film Festival has a problem with British filmmakers? Uh, now, the well, filmmaking? not really. I mean, right. they always have Ken Loach and yeah, Mike yeah. Lee. Yeah, they have their regulars. They have their regulars. Break in. Yes, people trying to break in is difficult. Uh, but uh, I think they should be more careful because they'll miss yeah. a whole generation of young filmmakers Absolutely. who are very promising. Absolutely, yeah. Definitely. And uh, they should be shown here, yeah. not necessarily in competition, Absolutely. but somewhere anyway. Okay. And I would advise British filmmakers who come here to stop sitting around in the British Pavilion. Yeah, right. And, and talking. Come, come, come to the Indian Pavilion? Yes, come anywhere right. uh, and meet people and go to see some films. They never go and see any films. Well, they spend a lot of time networking and trying they to... They network? Yes. But I suggest that they would make better films if they made, if they had a look at some of the films here. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Well, Derek, it's been a pleasure. Thank All you right, so much then. for your time. Have a great festival. I'll do my season. best if I don't drop Take dead. <laughs> Take care. Thank you, okay. Thank you Derek. That's brilliant.